The best part of getting new stuff is peeling this stuff off. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a look at Spectrum's new smart technology, and of course they picked the smartest person they know. Oh, that person wasn't available? Smart technology is a new ecosystem by the people at Spectrum to bring all of your electronics together, talking to each other, and giving you as much information back as possible. They have a full line of ESCs, both for surface and for air. I'm not really interested in air, but if that's your thing, super cool. There are also batteries, there are chargers, and a lot of their current transmitters will also function with the smart technology as well, including the DX5C and the DX5C Rugged, both of which I think are pretty decent radios. For the purposes of this demo, I have set everything up to work with the DX5C. And one of the things I'm gonna mention right off the bat, if you do this firmware upgrade, you will lose all the models stored on your DX5C radio. And I haven't figured out a way to actually keep those. So uh, my loss is your gain, uh, cause I'm gonna have to reprogram the radio for 11 different trucks. Uh, most of them behind me. Let's get right into some of the really cool features of smart technology. I am the smart SMRT. In the battery department, smart technology is really key. The new batteries that Spectrum has come out with range from 2S all the way up to 6S possible packs. Uh, this is a 5,000 milliamp 2S pack. And if you look at it, it's not huge. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty reasonable size for a 5,000 milliamp pack. All of their batteries and smart technology ESCs are using the new IC connectors, and that's an IC3 connector. Uh, I have an IC5 here as well, which uh, is much larger uh, in comparison to the uh, IC3. And this is for more of like your 4S uh, or above style packs, uh, just because you want to get all the gauge you can out of that wiring and uh, really get those um, volts pumping through them. What's great about IC uh, connectors? Um, I'll tell you. They are very easy to connect to each other and it is a nice, secure, solid connection. Uh, IC3 also carries a third uh, wire there and that's the communicator wire that allows for all of the telemetry data from the battery to go to your transmitter so you can uh, find out all of the details of that battery. That data cable also carries all the information to the smart line of chargers that Spectrum offers as well. And that's where smart really starts to shine. I found it really great because I am not amazing at battery technology and I'm not amazing at setting up uh, battery chargers. The Spectrum smart charger line takes out any of that doubt that you might have about LiPo batteries and charging them and discharge rates and charging rates and all the things that uh, I'm honestly not really familiar with. So what smart technology does is actually read all the data from the battery to the charger. So you plug in your battery uh, and I'm gonna do that now because it's great to actually demo things. The S21 smart charger that I'm using today does allow for charging of two batteries at once, uh, which is a really nice feature. Uh, I'm gonna show you how easy it is here to charge a battery. I'm gonna plug in the IC3 connector into channel one. As soon as I plug the battery in, it knows instantly that it is a smart battery, that it is 2S. Because it's a smart battery, it won't allow you to go in and change certain things. It knows it's a LiPo, so it's not gonna let you change that. Uh, you can go into the cell voltage and you can decide if you wanna have it at 4.18, 4.19, or 4.2 volts per cell. Uh, we'll keep it at 4.2 volts. Uh, and then you can uh, you can start that charge. And instantly it told me, do you wanna perform this task without balancing? And no, of course I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna plug in the balancing cable, uh, which is conveniently right beside the charging cable here. So we plug that in. So now we'll start, now that it knows it's in and it's charging. It's really that simple. And that's what I like about this system is that it makes it kind of uh, idiot proof. And that's good because I'm a pretty big idiot sometimes. I have over discharged batteries. I have overcharged batteries, which is very dangerous and you don't want to do that. So this takes away any of the guesswork. There are some really other cool features about the smart charger and the smart battery system. 
Most important to me, I think, is that you can actually go in and set a timer for an auto discharge to storage voltage, which sounds like magic. Uh, there's a microchip installed in each smart technology battery that uh, actually kind of communicates on its own. And if the battery hasn't been used in a certain number of hours, it'll actually discharge itself to a storage charge voltage and you don't have to worry about it and you don't have to think about it and you don't have to do it yourself, which is a really cool piece of technology. I am the worst at storing my LiPos at actual storage voltage and I've ruined a bunch of them because of that. So uh, this takes away a lot of that guesswork and makes it so much easier. Uh, one other note on this charger that it's very quiet. It's charging away here and it's not making a single bit of noise, which is really cool. It's nice to have a full color screen and it's not just for charging smart batteries. You can charge any battery with an EC3 connector as well. Of course, because it's not smart, you will have to go in and program all of those settings yourself. Uh, but it is nice to know that there is another option out there for people who are using legacy style connectors. Uh, it won't work unless you have some sort of adapter for Deans uh, or IC5, uh, but it is a pretty decent charger all around. There is also a USB port that delivers five volts at two amps, so you can actually uh, charge your phone uh, at the same time that you're charging your battery. As that battery is charging, let's go over some of the other features of smart technology, uh, including the Firma 130 amp ESC. Uh, this is a brushless ESC only. Uh, it's not censored, so it's not really meant for crawling uh, or uh, rock crawling uh, that that really kind of demands a censored brushless setup. Uh, but this is going to be great for those people who are bashing and uh, for one of my newest projects that I'm working on, a no prep drag car. I think this is the perfect ESC for that purpose. Uh, and I'm just kind of getting into the features of this ESC, but one of the best things about it is the built-in telemetry. Uh, provided you are using a compatible spectrum receiver and spectrum radio, all of the features of the ESC can be displayed on the display for your radio. And that to me is one of the coolest parts. I really like data and I love numbers and I like pouring over all of that stuff. The Firma 130 amp ESC offers a lot of programmable options. Anything you would expect from a high-end ESC are offered on this model. There is also a programming box available for this ESC so you don't have to click through a bunch of menus with the set button, uh, which would be a lot easier than trying to program it the way I've been doing it. My only disappointment is that there is no censored option. It is only for sensorless motors, so you will lose some low end and it really isn't designed for crawling. In this day and age, it would have been really nice to see a censored version of this ESC because most brushless motors today do operate in a censored environment and works so much better when you have that control in the low end. This ESC is quite well overbuilt. It's got a huge cooling fan on top, a really cool aluminum heatsink that sort of mimics the Spectrum logo, and also, probably most importantly, two actual uh, hard mounts uh, on either side of the ESC so you can actually mount this firmly into your model not just using some double-sided tape, and that is a really big feature for me. I'm not sure how long-lasting this standalone power on button is going to be, but uh, it does look like it's also waterproof, like the rest of the ESC itself. Out of the box, all Firma ESCs are using an IC5 connector, which is the larger, um, more geared towards the 4S and above batteries. So I had to attach my own IC3 connector, which was a really easy process. They made these connectors super easy to solder on. And um, even though it's got three wires, it's pretty self-explanatory how it all goes together. And I found it to be a really easy process. Uh, definitely something that I would recommend. As, as we go forward, it definitely appears as if more and more manufacturers are getting into proprietary connectors for their batteries and their ESCs. And I understand the value in doing that from a business standpoint. It does make it more difficult for us hobbyists who have multiple batteries from multiple sources, who want to try other batteries, who want to get into other ESCs, whatever it is, there's always going to be that connector that's kind of getting in the way of you using everything you already have. Let's go through a quick demo of all the telemetry data that you can see on your radio for the smart technology system. I'm gonna plug in my battery to the Firma ESC. I'm going to turn on my radio. 
and uh, for the purposes of this demo I've also connected a Spectrum SR515 receiver to the Firma and a generic brushless motor that I had in my uh, spare parts bin. If we scroll down one past the monitor, you'll see that the first screen shows the smart battery. It's a full battery, fully charged battery, so it shows that it's uh, got all full bars. Scroll down one more, you get battery info again, 5,000 milliamp hour, uh, the temperature of the battery, the imbalance in millivolts, uh, and how many milliamp hours have been consumed so far. Scroll down one more, you get the cell volt, you get the voltage of each cell, how many cycles that battery has had, and its current temp. Down to the ESC, you'll see that it's at zero RPM because I'm not accelerating at all. How many volts are being given to it, uh, the motor, how many amps it's taking, output percentage and throttle percentage, and the FET temperature, which is the actual temperature of the ESC. If there were a BEC attached, you would see that data there as well. And if you scroll down further, you can see the RF quality. I have no idea what any of that means. Uh, as I accelerate, you'll see the RPMs go up, how many amps the motor is pulling, and the output and throttle percentage. I'm going to accelerate here further, and all those numbers keep changing. And it's really quite interesting to be able to follow all of this data. So there's a demo on smart technology from Spectrum. I think it's a pretty cool setup. I really hope that they start to offer some censored brushless motor capable ESCs as well. It would be really nice to see that for us crawler specific guys. Uh, but as a, a general system, I think this is really well thought out and it's really, really great to see. If you have a higher end radio like a DX5 Pro or a DX6 or any of the stick radios that they use uh, in airplanes, there is a ton more data to be found and a lot better displays as well to be seen. I think this is a really good first step and I, uh, I'm pretty excited to play with it more and I cannot wait to get my no prep dragster up and running. There will be future videos on that so please stay tuned as that will be coming up very soon. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you again soon. <laughs>